privilege to be here at the Haus Social Institute. So I guess the title is Simple Civic uh, OSMAP ADA and the Homotopy Limit Problem for Hermitian K series. Of course, I wanted to put Hermitian in the title. And this is all joint work with uh, uh, Oliver Rundens and uh, Marcus Spitzweg. So I guess we all know what a homotopy limit problem is. So we have some homotopical object, say E, um, matching of a group, um, say G. Um, we, we look at the fixed points and the natural comparison map to the homotopy fixed points. <coughs> um, <coughs> so perhaps the first examples of such Right, so the homotopy limit problem asks in what to what extent this natural comparison map is a is a, is an equivalence or an isomorphism. Um, <coughs> so the first examples of such a homotopy limit problem might be the Tia Siegel completion theorem for equivariant uh, K theory. So examples Tia Siegel completion theorem. Equivariant K theory. Um, <coughs> it's also the Siegel conjecture on the Burnside ring. So the Siegel Siegel's Burnside ring conjecture. Um, now a theorem, as we know. Um, <coughs> so that's about the stable, it's all about the stable co-homotopy. <coughs> and then <coughs> more in the direction of K-theory, there's the Quillen-Lichtenbaum conjecture. So say the Quillen-Lichtenbaum conjecture for Galois extensions of... Uh, of fields. Um, now also uh, a theorem. Um, <coughs> so there's a <coughs> sort of a uh, topological precursor for the problem that I'm going to be talking about. So I want to review that problem first. Um <coughs> so, um <coughs> so if you look at complex K theory, KU, there's an action here by the by psi minus one, the Adams operation. Um, <coughs> and in this setting, the homotopy limit problem takes this form of a map from real K-theory KO to KU, homotopy fixed points, for the group of order two. So I write C2 for the group of order two. Let's just write I for this natural comparison map. Um, <coughs> so for this example here, we can um, we can run the homotopy fixed point spectral sequence. So um <coughs> the E2 page. Well, the E2 page starts off as follows. It's a group cohomology of, of C2 um <coughs> coefficients in, in KU star. Um <coughs> and um <coughs> one can compute this explicitly as follows. There's an algebraic expression for this E2 uh, page. And let me write it con conveniently as follows as an element eta and then T plus minus 1. And there's one relation that 2 times eta is 0. And this abuts to the homotopy of the fixed points of KU. Um <coughs> so here, so here um, let's recall that um, the generator, say, C of C2, that acts 
acts on the coefficients ku star, which we can write as a Lorang polynomial um, on u plus minus one by taking, um, by sending u to minus u. And then <coughs> on this E2 page, this generator T is just the square of this bot class U. So T is the, is the square. Square of the bot class. Okay. And just to get the degrees of these elements correctly. So eta here lives in by degree <coughs> one one and the degree of t is four zero. Okay, so let me attempt to give a to draw a picture of the E2 page. So I start here. Minus four, minus three and so on. So um, let a box be a copy of the integers and a dot be a copy of C mod 2. Then <coughs> for the fixed points of the, of the group C2, we have copies of the integers in, well, in degree 0, degree 4. This is generated by T. Here we have one in degree minus 4 generated by T minus 1. <coughs> And then <coughs> on this copy of the integers, there's a sort of um <coughs> there's a line by there's a line of multiples of eta. So on. Okay. And then likewise out here. These are the copies. So okay, so there's it turns out to <coughs> Just for by degree reasons, there are no D2 differentials, but there's a D3 differential, the well known one, and the D3 of the class T turns out to be eta cubed. Um <coughs> and one way to see this is, uh, for example, by an Adams E invariant calculation. And using that, um, well, pi 3 of k, k o is, is trivial. So there is a very nice D3 differential here. Killing off this class, eta, eta cubed. Um <coughs> All right, so when the, when the algebra is done, we find the following E4 page. Um <coughs> so that's going to look, uh, look like this. Um, so it's polynomial on generators alpha, eta, alpha, beta, plus minus one, and then relations to eta, um, <coughs> eta cubed, as we saw, um, alpha, eta. <coughs> and then what else? Alpha squares to four times beta. <coughs> and here in this... In this e e4 page, alpha corresponds to um <coughs> to two t and beta to t squared. <coughs> okay, but then we recognize the <coughs> recognize this as um really as the e infinity page as well. There are no further differentials. Um <coughs> but the abut that tells us that the abutment is Abutment is isomorphic to the homotopy of KO, and then it's quite straightforward to check that the comparison map is also a, um, an isomorphism. So this is how right. So this <coughs> this solves the sort of the homotopy limit problem for for the topological K theory spectrum. Um <coughs> this I want to make one remark here, which will be relevant somehow later. Um, <coughs> so this is all for the uh, non-connective versions. So if you look at the connective versions, then so then we have little ko, 
the home to the fixed points of little ku, and this is not a uh, not a V2 coherence. I mean the the target here is is not connected. I mean the taking the home to the fixed points messes up connectivity. So the homotopy cofiber is fiber is is an infinite wedge along the McLean spectrum. Well, C mod two I invert McLean spectra and I is negative here. Okay. So that was the topological story, and now, um, so I want to talk about the motivic analog of this uh, problem here. So just as in yes, all of this talk from yesterday, um, we'll be working over a field, um, and the field will have characteristic different from two, and then we'll also impose another condition about the cohomological dimension of the field. Um <coughs> There's some hope that we can get rid of this assumption, but that's um, maybe work in progress. So. <coughs> So from now on, f will be a field. Um, its characteristic will be different from 2. Um, <coughs> and we'll assume that the so-called virtual cohomological dimension of f, which we define to be the 2 cohomological dimension of f extended to the square root of minus 1, is finite. So <coughs> this assumption it's, is quite commonplace. It's if you want to have a field which does not satisfy this assumption, then we need to look at a function field and infinitely number of variables. Otherwise, this will be this is satisfied. For example, for the rational numbers, the ECD will be two, so it's um, okay in that case. Okay, so we'll be looking at the algebraic K theory spectrum. KGL, um <coughs> and yesterday we also learned that there's an Adams operation acting on KGL. Um, there's a psi inverse minus one acting here, and <coughs> when we form homotopy fixed points, we'll just form homotopy fixed points with respect to a free contractible simplicial C2 space. So form, we'll be forming homotopy fixed points points with respect to EC2 as in topology. Nothing fancy pansy with the with the topology on the on the on our schemes or anything. It's just as it's really the sort of simplicial homotopy fixed points that we're forming here. Okay, <coughs> and then just to get the history right, there are some results from this homotopy limit problem before our work. Um <coughs> so let, let me just recall that first. So there's a result by who? Krish Ornsby. Um, published in 2011, and then by Beric Karubi, um, <coughs> Schlesting, and me. In when was that? Just last year. Um <coughs> and it roughly says the following: that the comparison map for the from KQ. So KQ is Hermitian K theory.
first introduced by Hornbostel in this motivic setting, um <coughs> and mapping to now to the homotopy fixed points of algebraic K theory. And the results here says that this map is a two adic equivalence. Okay. So <coughs> it's really after only after two adic completion that that um <coughs> We knew before that this map is an isomorphism, say, on homotopy groups. So, so all the, the all the divisible stuff that's uh, certainly in in here are are all all gone once V two complete. So we don't really see that in this solution here. Um <coughs> okay. So now, <coughs> so to state our main result, I need to introduce the Hopf map. So, so. All were already. What's that? Oh. Yes, uh, really. This the, the VCD has to be be finite for this, and the characteristic is different from two from two. Right. All right. So. So again, <coughs> as as yesterday, let's let Ada be the just a canonical map from the punctured affine plane into P1 um, be the so-called first motivic half map. Right, so this eta is the is the half map that appeared in my title. Um, <coughs> so <coughs> it turns out that using eta, we can sort of get rid of this completion um <coughs> in the in this previous theorem. Um, so, <coughs> but it is at some still at some um some cost um <coughs> instead of taking a two adic completion we will be completing with respect to eta instead Have we? So this is renderings. Mm. Split sway can be empty set just this year. Um <coughs> we're saying that this map, this comparison map from KQ to home top of fixed points, um, is an ADA equivalence. Okay, so <coughs> and there's there's more to this. So uh, by eta equivalence, I I should say that um, what I mean by that is that once we take the eta completion of the source and target, then the map becomes an uh, an isomorphism. <coughs> so <coughs> the tar it turns out that the target here is already eta complete. Um <coughs> so there's an addendum here the homotopy fixed points on KGL HC2 is eta complete. So it's it's 
So the map from the from this homotopy fixed points to, to its eta completion is already an isomorphism. So the theorem gives a complete sort of description, some sense of the of these homotopy fixed points. So in particular on homotopy groups or on motivic homotopy groups. Groups, there's an induced isomorphism. Um <coughs> so <coughs> the motivic homotopy groups are bigraded, right? We, we saw yesterday that the motivic spheres are bigraded. So let me write this star for the homotopy groups. So just remember there are really two indices there. Um <coughs> then we have the eta completion, and then this is maps by an isomorphism to the corresponding homotopy groups for KGL homotopy fixed points. Um, can I do that? Okay. <coughs> okay. Um <coughs> yes. Yes. I don't, n this result, no. I mean, this result up there, yes, but not this here. <laughs> so I should, I should say here uh, um, that eta, um, if you get the indices right, then eta is in pi 1, 1 of the sphere spectrum, and it this turns out to be, it's not a nilpotent element. Um, Non-nilpotent. Right. Okay. So. Okay. So. <coughs> so let me review a little bit about the the techniques that we use for for this proof. So. <coughs> so the way we approach this uh, this result is using the slice spectral sequence techniques. So. <coughs> Maybe we should first remark that the way we solve this problem in topology by the homotopy fixed point spectral sequence won't get us anywhere because of we don't even know the coefficients, right? So that's just hopeless. So instead, we use try to approach this via the slice spectral sequence. So we'll use the we'll use the slice spectral sequence or the slice filtration. on the stable stable motivic homotopy type. SH, say. So, of course, this is always um, relative to the field that we fixed in the beginning. <coughs> so, <coughs> remember that this is a filtration um <coughs> of SH by localizing subcategories. So just as all were introduced yesterday. So there are, what we'll do is we'll play around with lots of homotopy cofiber sequences or distinguished triangles in SH, which are obtained from this slice filtration. Um <coughs> so yesterday, Oliver introduced the slices, and let me just um <coughs> remind you about that um <coughs> so in this setup there are um <coughs> um homotopy cofiber sequences um <coughs> uh, 
Um, <coughs> so as in yesterday's talk, we have um, we have some <coughs> motivic sort of analog of connective covers of, of spectra. So these were are often called effective covers. Um <coughs> so E is now a motivic spectrum, say. Then <coughs> we can always pass from the Q plus one effective cover to the Q effective cover and the cone of that map is the Q slice. Slice and this is the Qth effective cover. Cover E. <coughs> okay. Um <coughs> now this filtration is exhaustive. Um <coughs> so one can prove the following thing that the homotopy colimit as Q tends to infinity of F Q of E, this maps by an isomorphism to E. <coughs> So the filtration is exhaustive. Okay. Um <coughs> there's also um um we'll also be needing the so called um effective co covers. So <coughs> let me write that here. The Qth effective co-cover um <coughs> that's again defined by a homotopy cofiber sequence or a distinguished triangle so that's gotten by taking the natural map from the qth effective cover of e to to e and then the cone is um <coughs> denoted by f q minus 1 of e um <coughs> Okay, so a special case of this, <coughs> when we let Q be, be zero, is um, the so-called effective cover of E. So for the effective cover, <coughs> let, me, let me denote this by little e. So this will be an object in the effective um, stable homotopy category. So <coughs> so there we have a homotopy cofiber of this form, little e mapping to e, and then the, the cone is f minus 1 of e. <coughs> okay. So <coughs> f minus 1 of e is the called the effective co-cover. Um <coughs> effective. cover um <coughs> and we can show that all the non negative slices um of this effective co cover are trivial so all non negative slices are trivial so <coughs> um here for the effective cover, all the negative slices are trivial. Um <coughs> okay. <coughs> so, <coughs> right. of the values in spectra are yes yeah 
yes, pro provided your scheme you're evaluating at is series of finite type over a field with finite VCD. Right. <coughs> <coughs> so this fellow on the right hand side here, this effective coal cover, is what we also call a um <coughs> coeffective spectrum. So F minus one of E is a coeffective spectrum, meaning that it's um right orthogonal to the effective subcover. So right orthogonal to SH effective. Um, <coughs> in other words, if you look at maths in SH from something in the effective subcategory into this um, effective co-cover, then that's, that's just trivial. Okay. Now, <coughs> mm. Using those effective co-covers, <coughs> we can define the so-called slice completion of E. So the slice completion um <coughs> of E, we define as the homotopy limit um, when Q tends to infinity of F Q minus 1 of E. <coughs> Yes, that's right, exactly. And if we start thinking about complex points on this slice completion and so on, it does not map to the to the Pasnikov tower in, in topology. There's another filtration called the very effective slice filtration, where which has that property that it's better behaved with respect to the Pasnikov tower in topology. I, I don't really know if we will hear more about that later today. Maybe, maybe not. <coughs> right. Okay, so Bobatsky proved the result about the slice completion of algebraic K theory. <coughs> so he proved that KPL is slice complete. Meaning that the map from KPL to its slice completion um <coughs> is an isomorphism. Um <coughs> okay, and the proof um <coughs> consists of, of consists of uh, of asserting that the homotopy limit um <coughs> of when Q tends to infinity of F lower Q of K B L is contractible. Okay, <coughs> so <coughs> before we sort of start on the proof proper, these are the, <coughs> the ingredients that we will need. Um <coughs> and I also want to, just in analogy with topology, let's also recall from yesterday's talk that the greatest slices of KBL, <coughs> what's that? Well, we can think of that as the slice over <coughs> the zero slice of KGL um, and then some Laurent polynomial ring on that. And if you want, this is, well, the zero slice of K theory is motivic homology. So this is a Laurent polynomial over um, motivic homology. So, um, I mean, the similarity with topology here is that the slices sort of behave like the homotopy groups in topology, just as the homotopy groups of KU are is a Laurent polynomial on a bod element. <coughs> the 
the slices are, uh, are or the full slices is, uh, is again a, a Laurent polynomial, but now over motivic homology instead of the integers. Um, yes, I mean, there's <coughs> lots of examples of um, spectra which are not slice complete for, um, <coughs> um, for example, the sphere spectrum is, is not, not slice complete. So let me try to give you a flavor of the proof. So I want to try to outline the proof next. Okay, so outline and proof. Okay, so let's start with the following naturally induced diagram. So we have KQ mapping to the homotopy fixed points of KDL. So um, that's the map we're interested in. Now <coughs> let's let's just write up again this homotopy cofiber sequence for the effective covers here. So. Um, so little kq is the effective cover of kq, and then we have this co-effective cover of kq. <coughs> and here, the same. Um. Okay, <coughs> all right, so uh, I, I want to try to break the proof down into a few steps. So um, first, um <coughs> this result that <coughs> all the vertical maps in this diagram here are slice isomorphisms. So once we apply the slices to this diagram, it will have vertical isomorphisms. So vertical vertical maps are slice isomorphisms. Okay. Um, <coughs> so, so in particular, it really follows by, by having this result here, the map in the middle um, is an isomorphism for all Q all the slices. I think Oliver will talk about this uh, later today. Maybe I don't want to put pressure on him. Me, but maybe. Um <coughs> and then maybe also the slices will be probably revealed uh, later today, uh, the explicit um, construction of them. Now, <coughs> there's something special with the right hand, with the rightmost vertical map here. Um <coughs> so this is... Um a map between co-effective spectra that induces an isomorphism on all slices. Now that's enough to conclude that the map itself is an isomorphism. So <coughs> simple argument shows that the rightmost vertical map, the map is an isomorphism. Um <coughs> because it's a map between co-effective spectra map between co-effective spectra. So 
spectra and the slice isomorphism. Okay. All right, so in this step, all we've done I is <coughs> reducing the question of the math, the middle vertical map being an isomorphism to a equivalent que question of asking whether the leftmost vertical map is, a, is an isomorphism. So if you look at the leftmost vertical map, you see that it's not quite a comparison map between fixed points and, and homotopy fixed points. Um, but we can turn it into one. Um, so step two, and step two is to show that <coughs> the map from F so F naught of KGL HC2 that we can pass the homotopy fixed points outside the um <coughs> effective cover. So the claim is that this here is isomorphic to uh, F naught KGL and then HC2. Um <coughs> and if you like, this is the um, homotopy fixed points of the effective uh, K series spectrum. <coughs> okay, so <coughs> so in particular, in particular, it follows that K um, KGL HC two is an SH effective, um <coughs> and that's actually a something that's special to this situation with K-theory, there's a warning here. Um, <coughs> um <coughs> nam namely that SH um, effective is not um <coughs> not closed under homotopy fixed points. Points with respect to C2. Okay, so <coughs> there's an example that shows this, but uh, explaining that as example will, would be another lecture. Um, so I'd rather not go into it. Um, <coughs> um <coughs> okay, now, <coughs> so that's step two, and then step three. Um <coughs> so in step three, we're going to study the the homotopy fixed points of the effective K theory spectrum and show the following. KGL HC2 has two nice properties, namely that it's eta complete. It's complete and it's slice complete. And the first property of being eta complete is not that difficult to show. This is basically because K, K theory is an oriented spectrum. <coughs> this follows follows because KGL is oriented. Mm. And eta acts trivially in the homotopy of any spectrum that's oriented. I mean the unit map for algebraic co algebraic cobordism factors over the, the cone of eta. Um <coughs> but the the assertion that it's slice complete, this is really in the core of the proof. This is a that's a much more um, much more difficult statement. Okay.
So now the reason why we care about the properties are listed in three is that once we have them, then <coughs> um, we can run the so-called slice spectral sequence efficiently for for this homotopy fixed points. Um <coughs> now there's one more thing that also appeared yesterday that we're using, namely the wood cofiber sequ sequence. So for the effective um <coughs> so for effective uh formation K theory and effective K theory. <coughs> so <coughs> so this map here is eta, right? Just as in topology. And this is telling us that the cofiber of eta on connective formation K theory is also slice complete. That's from Vovatsky's result that well, KGL is is slice complete, and so is the effective KGL. <coughs> okay, so that's the third step, and then the fourth step um <coughs> is to prove the following convergence result for the slice spectral sequence. Um <coughs> so if if we have a an effective spectrum E um <coughs> and the um, um the cofiber of A down E is is slice complete complete um <coughs> well then we have the following nice result that there's a conditionally convergent spectral sequence. So there's a conditionally spectral sequence. Um <coughs> so conditionally convergent this is the of course in the sense of Boardman. And this is the slice spectral sequence. And it takes the following form. Um, so we start with a homotopy of um <coughs> again the motivic homotopy of the slices of um little e and this abuts to the homotopy of the motivic homotopy of the eta completion of little e. <coughs> okay. So these, so the slice spectral sequence now for um <coughs> for effective Hermitian K theory and the uh, homotopy fixed points for effective K theory gives us just enough leverage to finish off this proof. So um this here is enough leverage to to finish the proof. What have we? We have. It's just now. It's, it's just a comparison of conditionally convergent slice spectral sequences. So we have the homotopy of the slices of little k q. Trying to cu trying to compute this guy, um <coughs> and then we compare with the homotopy, motivic homotopy of the slices of KGL homotopy fixed points, and this is computing um, really the homotopy, more the motivic homotopy of um, the homotopy fixed points of effective K-theory. And we have an isomorphism of 
on E1 pages. And by result of Boardman, that's enough to conclude that the abutment is also um, isomorphic. Okay. Okay, so that's that's really the really the outline. Um <coughs> so <coughs> so the step that I or the steps that I um <coughs> sort of skipped here in this outline of the proof is the following. So it remains to show show two facts. <coughs> So the first fact we need is that F naught of KGL that we can um, commute the homotopy fixed points through the effective um, covers. And secondly, that the KGL HC2 is slice complete. So So in order to prove those two things this um <coughs> well we can work a little bit more general this 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 is not really specific to the to the situation in in hand with with K theory so <coughs> So, say for G a finite group, um, if we're just assuming um <coughs> assuming that um, the slices of some spectrum E um, commutes with taking homotopy fixed points, um <coughs> then we can deduce these two claims there in, in five for for the effective cover of 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 E. Um <coughs> okay, so so assuming this here, um the claims in the claims in five holds. Okay. Um, <coughs> all right. Um, so let's see. <coughs> let's say try to say a few words about this here. Um, <coughs> so <coughs> let's consider the following diagram that we we look at E homotopy fixed points, take its slices, um, commute um, with homotopy fixed points, um <coughs> and then compare with the slices of the um, effective covers. So SQ, E, HQ, HD, mapping to, um, well, just commuting the ho homotopy fixed points again. So this is the effective guy, HD. And then on the right hand side of the diagram, we'll have the uh, effective co covers. <coughs> so SQ, F inverse of uh, E, uh, HD, and SQ, F inverse E, homotopy fixed points. Okay. <coughs> All right, so there are kind of two cases to to consider. One is that <coughs> one is when Q is non-negative, so Q greater or equal to zero. Um <coughs> so then um that's sort of the easy case. So then <coughs> we know that both the both the spectra on the on the rightmost side of the diagram, these are all um <coughs> contractible. So so SQ 
of um, the coeffective cover of E is the same as SQ of the <coughs> of the homotopy fixed points of the coeffective covers. And this is just uh, contractible because homotopy fixed points preserve coeffective spectra. <coughs> okay? So, so then de we definitely have an isomorphism here, and of course, therefore, also on the, the left hand side. Um <coughs> the difficult case is that then Q is negative. This is tricky. Um <coughs> So what we need to prove in that case is that the, um <coughs> the map from the qth slice of, of EHQ to the qth slice of <coughs> the homotopy fixed points of the coeffective cover um <coughs> is again an isomorphism. <coughs> okay. Um <coughs> so this implies then that the homotopy fixed points <coughs> of the effective cover is, is also effective. So this is an HF, HSH effective. <coughs> okay. So taken together, this tells us that um, the leftmost vertical map there is, is an isomorphism. So the leftmost leftmost vertical map map is an iso. Okay. So given that, then we prove the following. So two statements. <coughs> first first says that the um <coughs> effective covers also commutes with homotopy fixed points. So FQ, um, <coughs> E homotopy fixed points, maps by an isomorphism to SQ homotopy fixed points. <coughs> and this is, um, that's fairly straightforward. Here is just an induction argument. So induction argument. <coughs> and it also follows that E is slice complete. Um. Oh, thank you. Yes. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Great. <coughs> okay. So, <coughs> if E slice complete, this will now imply that the homotopy fixed points of E are also slice complete. <coughs> this follows, uh, so that's shown as follows, that, <coughs> well, if you look at a map, E, G homotopy fixed points to its slice completion, um <coughs> um <coughs> so, <coughs> so this isomorphism here, this follows from knowing that the coeffective covers also commutes with homotopy fixed points, which follows from knowing that the slices do and the effective covers do. So F upper Q of E H G is isomorphic to F upper Q of E and then G homotopy fixed points. Um <coughs> right. And now we're assuming that E is slice complete, so that tells us that this composition is just, well, it's an isomorphism between before taking homotopy fixed points, but homotopy fixed points preserves that property, so the composite is an isomorphism, so, so is that map. Right, so this <coughs> shows that the G homotopy fixed points of little E is also slice complete. Okay, then I can rest and I'll stop because now this seems to be pretty complete the proof. Okay, thanks. <coughs>